I'm John Skinner, and this supports my book, Striper Pursuit, and you can learn more about the book at striperpursuit.com. I'll be fishing with SNS John Skinner Bass Bucktail, Smiling Bill Style, uh, one ounce. And those will be tipped with the five inch split tail otter tail bait strips, the ones on the left. And I'll have links to all of the gear in the description of the video. All right, so this is a, a real early morning trip. So this is dawn, and uh, I've actually been out for a bit. I, I started in the dark, and I've been catching for a while, but uh, of course that video's really dark, so uh, we'll just pick it up at this point, and we'll see plenty of action. All right, so this is a bucktailing trip, and um, something I really want to focus on on this trip is how many of these fish are going to be caught while the bucktail is just sinking. So when you make the cast and the bucktail is dropping towards the bottom and the fish grabs it uh, before you ever even make uh, a turn on the reel handle. And a lot of the hits, almost I would say half on this trip are going to come that way. And we're going to get to see some uh, really good examples of this. So the thing about bucktailing is trying to dial in on the correct weight. Uh, that's um, one of the more challenging parts. And if you go too light, and you can see I've got significant current here. If your bucktail is too light in weight, in this case here, it's going to just blow on down tide and not get um, into that near bottom strike zone. If your bucktail is too heavy, it's going to sink like a rock. It's going to look very unnatural. So it's a matter of getting it right. Uh, you know, one of the things to ask yourself when um, you're coming to a, a new area, a spot that you haven't fished, is, you know, how deep is the water? Well, to be honest with you, I have no idea how deep the water is here. Um, this is not a place where it's convenient for me to get at by either boat or kayak. So, uh, you know what, water depth, it's just a number. I, I don't care what that number is, um, but I'm able to feel out the depth, make the cast, I'm taking a cr crank or two just to pick up the slack and I'm holding it, just holding it, holding it. It's sinking, it's sinking, it's sinking there. And the fish hit while that bucktail was dropping. Um, now, if that fish didn't hit within a couple of seconds, you know, I'm following the line, I'm watching the line, I would have seen that the jig hit the bottom. Now, when it does that, I'm going to then try to quick, you know, snap it up off the bottom, make a couple of cranks and just, you know, I don't want to drag in the bottom. I think it would look very natural for a fish to see something sinking, hitting the bottom, and then jumping off the bottom immediately as opposed to sitting there. So um, you know, that's what I'm looking to do here. So it, whereas I don't care, you know, is it 15 feet, is it 20 feet, is it 12 feet? I, I really don't care what that number is. I care that when I make the cast, um, that the bucktail is not going to just go to the bottom immediately, it's not going to just drift down current, um, that it's going to sink and get towards the bottom pretty quickly, and then when I start a retrieve, if, in this, if I don't get a fish while it's dropping, when I start that retrieve, that I'm able to, to then glide it near the bottom on a slow to moderate retrieve, or even a very little retrieve in this case, because I've got a lot of current to work with. There you go again. That bucktail sinking, there's a tap, I set the hook. All right, so I mentioned the weight of the bucktail. Obviously, it's very important. But the construction of the bucktail itself is also very important. You know, how bulky is it? How much hair is on there? I've been really picky, like all my life, about the bucktails that I use and for many years. Up until just a couple of years ago, I always tied my own, and uh, these bucktails have a little bit of extra hair, and they've got hackle feathers tied to the hook shank, and this helps bulk it out. It fills in that typical hollow spot of a bucktail, and that's the way I like them. And um, yeah, I, I tied my own. I really hate tying bucktails, but so one thing led to another, and SNS started making some for me, and now they sell them, um, and they're called SNS John Skinner bucktails. Uh, the Smiling Bill style. And uh, so that's what I'm using here. And you saw the pictures of them um, at the beginning of the video, and you could see, yeah, you know, they've got a significant amount of hair. They do a very good job of uh, tying these things consistency, consistently. So it's not like you, know, you get one and it's thin, the next one's bulky. No, they're all just about the same, which is uh, having tied these things to me, that's pretty impressive. Um, so that's something to think about is the hair density. You know, I'm, I'm using these kind of bulky bucktails and a one ounce is about right. Now, if I had a thin bucktail here and it was one ounce, 
it would probably go to the bottom faster than I would like. So then maybe I would drop back to a three quarter if all I had was some thinner bucktail. So it's something to think about, not just the weight, but how much hair is on that bucktail that you're using. And if it's bulky, well, you know, you might have a little extra lead. And if it's thin, then, you know, you might have to knock that weight down. For me, um, you know, this, this works for me. These bucktails have a nice profile. They sink the way I like, very natural fall. And yeah, they catch. Okay, so let me explain what you're seeing uh, here for presentation since you can't see me reeling because I'm really kind of focused. I'm very focused on the rod. Um, <clears throat> so when that thing hits, I'm letting it sink and I'm maintaining contact with that bucktail as it sinks. And like I said, about half the fish in this video, and there's going to be a lot of fish, um, they're going to hit on that fall. Um, so after, geez, I don't even know how many seconds it is. You, you'd have to look. Maybe it's six, seven seconds of it falling. If I don't get hit, uh, then that's when you'll see me move that rod a little bit. And, and yeah, I'm starting a slow retrieve there. And then I'm working it just a, a short distance, letting it slide down current. Um, and then after, I don't know, what is that, 10, 12 seconds or so, um, if I don't get a fish, then I'm just going to burn that bucktail back in because those fish are out there in that rip. Um, I want to maximize the amount of time I keep that lure in the strike zone. You know, if I retrieved it all the way to where I'm standing, yeah, I would catch a few fish on the inside, but nothing compared to uh, what's out near the end of the cast. So that's why you're going to see me uh, on, on the cast where I don't get fish, uh, I'm not going to you know, retrieve it all the way. I'm going to burn that thing in, get it back out there, get it where the fish are. Okay, now I want to talk about this rod. Um, I had this rod in a previous video where I was plugging some bluefish with it. And I said I liked it, and I said you're going to see a lot more of it. And, and boy, is that the truth. So this is an 8-foot Lamaglass GSB. Um, this is the first year they're making this rod, and uh, anyone who has followed my stuff, my writing for decades now, I have heavily favored uh, the Lamaglass GSBs for surf fishing. Uh, my 11-footer, um, the 9-footer, which they, uh, which I customized and which they now make, um, they call it a John Skinner rod. That's nine feet two inches. Um, yeah, that covers almost all of my fishing, but now in in a situation like this where, you know, you call this, you know, light surf or, um, you know, light surf conditions, bays and, and channels and things like that, where a nine-footer is, yeah, a nine-footer would be okay here, but I wanted to go a little bit lighter. Uh, this eight-footer is wonderful. I really like it. I, it's, uh, they've done a beautiful job with it. Um, I've got it paired with uh, Pen Slammer 3 4500. And that's spooled with 30 pound test Daiwa J Braid, the eight strand, all in all, all across the board. It's just a spectacular combination. I love it. Uh, you can tell watching this video, it's just um, really nice. It just handles the fish well, very comfortable. All right, and I've crushed the barb on this bucktail, and that's uh, helping me release these fish very quickly. You know, I mean, the barb is crushed, it's not completely gone. and. Yeah, I'm surprised even to w look back at the video and see times where, yeah, it even still takes a little effort to get that bucktail out of the fish. But, um, yeah, you know what? Crushing the barb, you won't lose any fish because you crush the barb as long as you keep a bend in the rod. Um, in fact, the hook sets are going to be a little bit better. Well, you can see I'm, I'm getting bumped there. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, the other tackle here is between the braid and the lure, I've got about a three foot liter of, uh, in this case, it was green uh, trilene big game I was using for liter material, 50 pound test. I've got a high quality barrel swivels. In this case, it's a Tsunami Centro. I think it was a 130 or 180 pound test. I'm not sure which one. Um, and a tactical angler's clip, 75 pound to join the leader to the bucktail. All right, that's really the bulk of the narration that I wanted to do. I'm going to jump in at a few points uh, along the way, and I'm going to make a few comments while I'm fishing. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot more action to come. And, uh, yeah, this was just, you know, just a gorgeous morning. Boy, it was just a beauty. All right, uh, if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe to my channel and uh, enjoy the rest of the fishing.
Are oh, you still watching? All right. Um, I mentioned the one-ounce bucktail. Yeah, a lot of the fishing is done three-quarters, one-ounce, ounce and a half in that range. That covers such a high percentage of bucktailing for stripers. I'm sure you can hear the kids in the background. Pretty funny at this hour of the morning. Uh, some guy's got his kids down the beach. It's a Saturday morning, so yeah, you hear boats and yeah, kids on the beach at daybreak. So.
every cast. Like landing the little ones, losing the big ones. Okay, so what am I complaining about now? Uh, yeah, if you watch it all the way through and you watch the last minute and a half, you're going to see um, what prompted that comment. Yeah, so I lost my otter tail bait strip there, so, uh, but boy, I caught a lot of them on the one I was using, and uh, it's like anything else, you know, they don't last forever, and um, I don't use the pre-cut holes. They have pre-cut holes in them, and I make my own because um, it will just stay on better. The pre-cut holes, especially if you crush the barb, well, then the hole's a little big and they can slide off, but yeah, that one caught a lot of fish, so uh, time to put a new one on. You know, I knew it didn't feel right. like the ones I lose.
All right, well, thanks for watching uh, all the way through, but we're, we're not done quite yet. Um, so as I mentioned, I started in the dark, and um, there's a clip here that was, it was just too dark to, to show at the beginning of the video, but if you've made it all the way through, then this next minute and a half is probably worth watching. It's uh, the reason I made that comment about losing fish. Um, yeah, I hooked a real nice one in the dark, and here we go. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe. Oh, oh, oh. oh.